Okay. All right. Hi, my name is Phil Jones. I am a chef here in the Detroit area. And I've been asked to be the guest chef this week. And this week we are going to be learning how to make stuffed acorn squash. And squash is a wonderful vegetable. It has a lot of uh, great antioxidant properties. It's filling, it's nutritious, it's delicious. Today we're gonna cook it up and we're gonna stuff it with some kale and a little sweet Italian sausage and some farro. We're gonna use all of these things to make a nice, warm, healthy winter dish. It is just absolutely delicious. So we're gonna get started with our squash. And for our squash, we are going to cut the, to the actual stem part if it needs to, it's not really necessary. We're gonna stabilize our squash because one of the things we wanna make sure is that we're gonna use proper knife safety and food handling techniques here. So we want to stabilize it. Got a nice sharp chef's knife. And we're gonna go into it very carefully, letting the knife do the work. And you see the squash has some seeds in there. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna take the squash seeds out of here using a large spoon. And if you're a gardener, you guess what you're gonna do with these seeds? You're gonna save those. And we're gonna keep going growing. And if you're not a gardener, you're gonna become a gardener or give it to a gardening friend. And the first half. And our second half. Another beautiful thing about squash, while it is tasty and nutritious and all of that kind of good stuff, it's relatively cheap. Uh, you'll see squash for under a dollar a pound. It could be acorn like we're using here, or it could be butternut, hubbard. These are all very, very inexpensive. So we're gonna take a little oil, brush up our squash like this. Got our other half here, we're gonna do the same. And we've got a sheet tray ready to go. Put some others here on there. And we're gonna take and season our squash because we're gonna season all the way through, lightly salted, not a lot because we know we're gonna add a little bit more to the dish later on. Plus has wonderful sweet Italian sausage has some salt in it too. And we want to be careful of our sodium and not for the reasons that we always think when we think blood pressure, blood pressure, blood pressure. But we're looking at the quality of the salt is one of our issues. So let's put it in a nice and hot form and it be up. Salt in itself is not the villain. The villain is sodium. So many of the salts that we use here today, especially that one in the round container, has way too much sodium because all the vital nutrients have been, minerals and such have been taken out. So something like that's gonna have about 99.5, 99.7% pure sodium. Whereas a good high quality salt is only gonna have about 95 to 97% sodium. And the rest is gonna be your vital nutrients, minerals and things like calcium and magnesium. Two of the things that we absolutely need to regulate blood pressure. So don't get it twisted, it's good salt versus bad salt. And if you're salting your own food, not buying processed food, you're not gonna have an issue. Going back to knife safety, see I've got a nice sharp knife here. I would encourage everyone to get a nice set of knives for your home. Not that you're gonna be a professional, but you wanna be safe. And so you'll notice that I'm gonna hold my knife such knuckle parallel to our tang here and fingers are way safe. And I'm always gonna use my hand curled fingers and thumb up under. And those are always gonna be the motion. So little knife safety here. 
Now we're gonna get into the rest of our recipe. We've got that squash baking. And so right now we're gonna get into making our farro. Farro is one of those ancient grains. Uh, has a wonderful mouthfeel to um, remind people of, a, of barley, um, millet and such like that. Really wonderful grain. We're gonna cook that up today with a little um, apple cider and some water. So, pan, furrow, water, and apple cider. And we've got a couple sprigs of thyme here. Um, we're gonna leave some whole that are gonna go directly in the pan. We've also harvested a few of the leaves for a little bit later on to add a little flavor. So we're gonna take this and place it on the stove. In the meantime, we're gonna let that come up to a simmer and we're gonna cook that for about 30, 25, 30 minutes. If it's not 100% tender to your liking, you can add a little bit of water and take it from there. So while we're waiting on those two things to cook, we're gonna take and make our filling for the acorn squash. So I'll take pan here. A little sweet Italian sauce. You can use a spicy if you want or a mild. We're using sweet today. Um, but that really is up to you. So we're gonna break that sausage up here once it starts cooking a little bit. Uh, he, he, the original recipe called for adding a little oil to get this started. A lot of times you can do that, but there's enough fat inside of the Italian sausage that we can take that oil out. Even though it is olive oil, which is one of our healthy oils, we wanna minimize our use of oil because no matter what kind of oil it is, it's roughly 120 calories per tablespoon. So oil is oil, fat is fat. We just wanna make sure that we are controlling it and using it only where necessary. So, sausage is starting to cook up a little bit. So we're gonna break it down, we'll break it into smaller pieces and let it cook that way. While that's cooking, we're going to get the other parts of this going for you. And we see that our flour is coming up to a simmer now. And we're going to lower our heat a little bit. Flour is cooking, sweet Italian sausage is cooking, acorn squashes or halves are in the oven cooking, and we've got it started here. So. We're gonna let that sausage cook. And while that's happening, we're gonna get our celery and onion together. I've already got it chopped up for this, but I wanna just demonstrate to you really quickly some nice safe knife handling skills and how to just basically dice an onion. I see in your literature that they show you how to dice, mince, and chop. And so today we're just gonna dice this onion up and Show you how that works. Moving the skin. We're going to save that for compost. And we have a nice whole onion. This is a small onion. You can tilt that down for me just a touch. A little more. All right, there we go. Cutting the onion in half. We're not going to do anything fancy. We're just going to make some cuts along the top of the onion, along across the section, very simply. And then we're going to make even cuts along the cut onion, flipping the second half. And that's how we get diced onion. Now you'll see people on TV, chefs on TV, doing a whole nother way. 
taking the onion, laying it down, and making a cross cut like that. And then making some cuts along the top of the onion. And then going in a 90 degree angle, a little bit more precise cut, but not necessary for our applications today. And you see I'm taking my knife and I'm scraping, but I'm not scraping the other way because we want to make sure that our knife blade does not hit the board like that. You can just push it back up a little bit. There we go. Wiping our blade in between. It really doesn't cost a lot to make. A couple of squats, they're going to get three squats, that's probably like three, four bucks. Uh, Italian sauce brand, uh, three fifty. We're using about a dollar fifty worth of farro, dollar and kale, and the rest of the ingredients, maybe another buck or two. So you can have a really nice, elegant meal for six people for almost ten bucks when the, at the end of the day. baking off in the oven nicely. Now we're not going to add any more oil to the pan. We probably could. And we're going to take whatever oil we can get. And that should be the fish. We got our onion that you saw how to dice and some diced celery. This one go right in here. And we're going to let that cook for a moment. Once again, we're going to add a little bit of salt. And what's going to happen is this salt is going to help remove some of the water that's in there. Because one of the things I keep saying a lot over and over again, wherever there's water, there's no flavor because water is odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Um, it doesn't really do us any good here. So we're going to let that start going for you. A little pepper for seasoning. Get that going. We're going to soften up these vegetables and get this building together for you. Normally, what I would be doing, I would be chopping up the kale right now, but we've already done that. And so we're looking for nice little bite-sized pieces. We've got that that's pretty simple. We remove the stem and it's chopped it up for you. So this, this sweating of the vegetable, that's what it's called because it's releasing all of that wonderful water that doesn't do much for us. Uh, we're gonna do that about five, six minutes. And then we're going to add our chopped garlic at the end because we don't want our garlic to burn. And show you how to get that garlic nice and fine. Taking your garlic clove, you took that down just a tad bit for me, please. All right, great. You'll see, and I'll start by 
roughly chopping this garlic. a little soft then we're gonna take we're gonna add a little salt to the board what this is gonna do is take up some of that garlic oil that's gonna be on the actual board we're gonna do something a little bit fun here and we're just gonna smash I'm drawing my blade across the garlic here first get some of those bigger chunks down then we're gonna just start making this into a paste Did you grab a bench scraper for me? Bench scraper. Should be one behind you there. So we got a nice little paste going. Thank you. Put that in our cup. We're gonna use a bench scraper because we're not gonna really damage our blade. Sharp knives are always safer than dull knives. May not seem like it, but that is the absolute truth. Put this in here. I'm going to let this get a little fragrant. Got some chop time in there. My pan is pretty dry. That's pretty, that's okay. As I said before, we don't need all that oil anyway. Turn our heat off. Now that garlic rising up. That's going to bring it back up. I've got to hold up the strip to go here. Um, now that that is nice and fragrant, we're going to use our kale here. I'm going to put it in the pan. A little salt. Little pepper. You notice we're, like we're seasoning lightly all the way through. As you can always add, you can't take away. Now we are going to add just a hair of mild oil. It is really, really dry. We want to make sure that that kale does cook for us. Tablespoons of apple cider, a little bit of moisture. Sizzling away there. We're going to 
check our fire hose to tell it's got a little ways to go yet. It's almost all the liquid is absorbed, but we know that we're going to add a little bit if we need to. It smells like warm and nutty and just really delicious. So I know I'm going to get a little more liquid. a couple more moments and it'll be done. So we're gonna take a quick break and we'll be right back. Okay, we're back and we've got our butternut squash cooked. Nice and tender. They will take a, the point of a knife, stick it in, go all the way through. Uh, our wonderful farro is cooked. We did find, though, it takes a little bit more than the recipe called for. So our recipe called for two cups of cider, and we're finding that four cups is a little bit better. It's gonna add a little bit more sweetness, kind of really mirror the sweetness of the squash, and that sweet Italian sauce that we got going there. We're gonna try doing this without binding it with anything extra. We think some little cheese would be great, but we kind of keep our calorie count down. We've got this wonderful low sodium, low calorie, high in fiber, high in very high vitamin A. I think it's like 450 times the recommended daily intake. Uh, delicious farro in here. Wonderful wilted kale. And this is just a perfect winter dish, and today we actually got three or four good inches of snow. And so, look forward to dinner tonight. Get that all nice and mixed up. That stuff is still warm, but we're going to wind up popping it back in the oven for a minute. Let's get a smaller spoon. We'll get these up. We might have a little extra filling. You could do a little something else with that, make it a cold salad, which is always tasty. And like I said, this squash is full of active nutrients, great for fiber, and there's so many different types of squash that acorn squash, butternut squash, our softest squash is like zucchini and summer squash. We have our Hubbard squashes, our pumpkins, uh, and all of them have common origin, little selective growing and little love created to different varieties. But we really encourage you to try them all. Like I said earlier, it's really economical. So you see, we do have a little extra stuff in here. We'll use that for something else. And here's your finished dish. Um, tasty, easy, healthy, and um, relatively easy to pour. To pour. Uh, we see we've got six portions here. Nice salad goes with this and you've got a meal. We thought about the cheese, like I said, you could top it with a little cheese or mix them in. Do a couple of those with a little Parmesan. Then you would pop these back in the oven. Bring them to the temp or to melt the cheese. And that's the dish. So I hope you enjoyed making stuffed acorn squash with me. Once again, my name is Chef Bill Jones, and we saw today a couple of techniques using nice skills. Being a safe knife user, uh, we are our only protection if we're doing the cooking, so you know, we've got to be careful. And we also want to talk to you briefly about food safety in general. Um, one of the things that a lot of people take for granted is the length of time that food is in the refrigerator, especially if we are trying to cook for ourselves. And so we make sure that we know when our food goes in, 
and then you create some easy kind of labeling system to make sure that you're using things up within five days, seven days max, most things. Five days is a little bit safer. Um, don't cook too much. Be conscious of your leftovers and enjoy. So thank you for joining me and check us out next week.